I don't care what one thinks about me um, or what judgments you want to make about what happened in the privacy of my own home and my marriage behind closed doors. I, I don't presume the average person should know those things, and so I don't take it personally. But even somebody who is sure I'm deserving of all this hate and vitriol, even if you think that I'm lying, you still couldn't look me in the eye and tell me that you think on social media there's been a fair representation. You cannot tell me that you think that this has been fair. There's no polite way to say it. The jury looked at the evidence you presented, they listened to your testimony, and they did not believe you. They thought you were lying. How could, I'll put it this way, how could they make a judgment? How could they not come to that conclusion? They had sat in those seats and heard th over three weeks of nonstop, relentless testimony from paid employees and towards the end of the trial, randos, <laughs> as I say. So you but don't blame the jury? I don't blame them. It wasn't, I, I don't blame them. I actually understand he's a beloved character and people feel they know him. He's a fantastic actor. Their job is to not be dazzled by that. Their job is to look at the facts and the evidence. And they did not believe your testimony or your evidence. I, again, how, how could they, after listening to three and a half weeks of testimony about how I was a non-credible person, not to believe a word that came out of my mouth, He's a wonderful presence. Johnny is, is one of the most gifted actors we have. He is uh, a truly gifted character actor that is trapped in a leading man's body. He's, there's no one else like him. And he's, um, to add on top of that, to the unfairness and torture of that, he's also a wonderful person, wonderful human being. And, um, and, and I could not have asked for a better co-star. <laughs> Our, our experiences as women are as varied and nuanced and uh, layered as as men. Uh, and, and, and unfortunately, when we look at how we're portrayed in art and we look at how we're portrayed in movies, which are supposed to be a representation of life, uh, there's a, a deficit, a cruel deficit of the varying scope of variety and nuance available to characters that are supposed to be portraying women and the vast variety of things that we are. You opened up to Elle recently about, you know, being married. What's your favorite thing about being married? They always say I opened up because I, <laughs> <laughs> I said I was, because I confirmed. <laughs> I said, yes, I am. Um, I said I'm a happily married woman, and I'll say it again. I'm a happily married woman. And again, if that's the version of opening up, then <laughs> That's it. I'm open. So tonight, up. my headline will be Amber Heard. It will say Amber Heard. But uh, but yes, I said I'm um, very happy. I don't have social media, so right. I, don't, I don't know. But I do. I am aware mm -hmm. that it is happening. I'm aware of this phenomenon. And I think it's really interesting to look at how it's affecting, especially younger younger girls mm -hmm. um, that are raised in a in a, in a, in a culture. This is just. Uh, a, a part of their everyday life is this re su superficial representation and, um, and, and promotion of themselves in this way. Um, but for me, I, I think, with my life, I think it's a, the most precious thing I can have is privacy, and, 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 and so I don't, I don't have any, I don't have any yeah. <laughs> reason or desire to want to put it out there. Nothing. But 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 I understand a lot of people do and why they would. You know, a lot of people. Um, find ways to do it, you know, for, 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 for good and to control their, the representations of, of themselves, which I think actors typically or celebrities typically have not had control mm -hmm. over for a long time. I'm really excited to be 30. Mm -hmm. I think it's, um, you know, your 20s are, I feel like when I ask women this often, my friends say that, 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 that it's the, one, some of the hardest years of the 20s. I don't know who said the standard that that's supposed to be the most fun, but I think I've I've lived enough life in my 20s. I'm looking forward to um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to this new kind of chapter. If you want to look at it that way, I'm excited to be you know even more of a woman. That's yeah. what it feels like. 
Violence against women is an issue that transcends all social, economic, geographic boundaries. Everyone is affected. It's a global issue, and it's an issue that has uh, been relegated m mostly to the private sector. It's yes. largely unspoken about, underrepresented, underreported. It is internationally the most underreported crime. It affects uh, women uh, it di it, at a disproportionate level, and it's it does so silently. And unless we raise awareness and talk about it and bring it to light, we can't change the system. It maintains the silence. You know, we can't change it unless we talk about it. And it's really easy to not change it if we don't see the faces, if we don't see who our rules, our systems are hurting. It's an issue that happens predominantly behind closed doors. Violence against women is an unseen thing. Even economic violence against women, it's an unseen thing. And us women are strong and we endure and we have a lot of stuff to do in our life. So if we stopped and talked about it and, and, and cried every single time an injustice befell us, we would have no time in the day. And so here we are enduring and surviving almost too much. And I want to just be one of the many, many voices right now of women, of countless women who are standing up and saying, enough is enough. Hear me too. Yes, me too. Time's up. <laughs>